Well, good morning. Hey, I'm so glad that you're joining us for this New Year's Eve morning service. There's nothing going on at the church. It's all online today. I'm glad we get to connect this way, though, because all throughout Christmas, we're celebrating the light of the world is coming, the light of the world is coming, and now the light of the world has come. And we want to celebrate the light of the world together. That's what we're going to do. In a moment, our band is going to sing. They're going to knock your socks off because they're incredible. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the light of the world uh, later on. But before we do anything else, let me invite you to participate today. I want you to sing along with these songs. Uh, listen in. Uh, be part of what's going on. Let's pray together. God, thank you for the gift of technology. Thank you that we get to connect together this way and that we get to celebrate you, the, the light of the world, in this way. I pray for our time together that you would be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen.
When I was growing up, I remember hearing people say how much they loved the fall, and I could never understand why. I mean, I did not like the fall at all. Like, sure, there's some things to like about it, right? Football showed up again, it cooled off, and especially when it's 100 degrees outside and it starts cooling off, you go, man, I, I like that. But with that cool weather came a lot of wind, and so I, I didn't like that. And then uh, my lips would get chapped a lot too, and, and I definitely did not like that. But more than anything, for me, it was the fact that the light seemed to change. You know what I mean? It wasn't just because of daylight saving time or anything like that. It was, it was because the light actually seemed different. It changed, and I didn't like the way everything looked. You, know, you combine that with the fact that everything's starting to die and leaves are falling off trees and, and stuff like that, I found it to be real gloomy and dim. That all changed when Christmas time rolled around because at Christmas time, it, it got darker sooner, but there were lights, lots of lights everywhere. And I grew up before Amazon was a thing. And so you actually had to go shop in, in actual stores and buy all this stuff. And all these stores had lights everywhere and people had lights everywhere. And there was music playing because they wanted you to buy stuff and to walk into their store with the music and the lights and all the stuff. That was a beautiful time of year. It was a beautiful time of year. I, I loved Christmas. And it was almost as if all of these lights were suddenly out there to celebrate this light of the world that we were waiting on. I was reading a story the other day about a guy named Simeon. Simeon was an older man living about 2,000 years ago. And God had promised him that he would not die before he met and saw the Messiah. What a promise, right? What a promise. But I'm sure as time went on for Simeon, he started wondering if maybe he had misunderstood God or uh, maybe he had misinterpreted things or maybe God was just speaking in metaphors or something like that. But he held strong and he held true and he kept believing, waiting for this Messiah, this, this chosen one who would come and set everything right, make everything better and, and good again. And he kept waiting until one day something happened. If you have a Bible or you want to pull it up on your phone, you can look with me at Luke chapter 2. Uh, in the middle of, of what's going on with Simeon, off to the side, somewhere else, is this young family. And this young family uh, is Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. And now is the time that they have to come uh, to the temple to present Jesus. And it's the first time that Mary is able to do this uh, by law. She's gone through all of her purification rites and all of this stuff. That's where we pick up today. Luke chapter 2, verse 27. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. That's, that's Simeon. So he, he's having a conversation with God. There's this ongoing thing going on and he's moved by the Spirit to go to the temple courts and he shows up there. Now, remember, he doesn't know why necessarily and he doesn't know that this kid wandering around is, is definitely the guy, but, uh, well, let's pick back up. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in, in his arms and praised God. Okay, imagine you're a first-time parent or a young parent or you just got a baby. Imagine all of that. And you walk into the temple courts to do your religious duty. Like say you're there for your child dedication Sunday at church or, or say or whatever, uh, some, some big moment. And all of a sudden, this strange old man comes running over and grabs your baby and holds him up like Simba in The Lion King and goes, ah, finally, finally, right? Actually, here's what Simeon says. He says, uh, sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. Look at this line, though. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. I mean, that's got to be a little unnerving. I mean, imagine being Mary and Joseph. Like, you know that this child is special and you know that God placed this child in Mary's womb. You know all of this and that he's supposed to save their people from their sins. But it's still got to be weird for some stranger to come running over, grabbing your kid and saying all of this stuff. 
it still got to be a little strange to hear that about this kid and to hear him called the light of the world. What's interesting, though, is, is that's a phrase that, that Jesus starts using for himself. He, he actually says this uh, to his disciples at one point uh, d- during his ministry. He says, uh, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. His point is, I'm the light, but if you come around near me and if you're there with me, uh, you're going to be the light too. You're going to have this light with you, kind of like a, a sun and moon situation. You think about like the sun is the one with all the light, that the moon just kind of reflects it back. Jesus says, if, if you want light around you, you need to walk by me. That's why Jesus ultimately tells his disciples in, in another place, you are the light of the world. It's because when you walk with Jesus, you are sharing Jesus' light with the rest of the world. Much like the moon and the sun, you're sharing the light with the rest of the world. It's not that you're so incredible and you're so great. It's that Jesus is and you're following him. You're with the light of the world. It makes sense that some of that light would go off if if you're that close. I mean, nobody likes walking in darkness. I don't know if you've ever been lost in the woods at night. No flashlight, no cell phone, no nothing to to help you. It's eerie. It's scary. But what if suddenly you had a friend with a lantern? Brighter than any other lantern you can imagine. You wouldn't be afraid anymore. And you'd be celebrating that friend. You'd be celebrating that friend. As we come to the end of this year and we look to the next year, Here's what I want to invite you to do. I want you to celebrate the light of the world by being a light. Like reflect Jesus' light. Be a light. When you're driving, be a light. When your kids have driven you nuts, be a light. Kids, when your parents are just like not understanding you and, and, and you feel like they're being a little bit extra mean, be a light. When you're at work and and that one coworker who really gets under your skin gets promoted and everybody's gossiping about it and and you want to pile in, be a light. In every situation you find yourself in, go and be a light. That is how you can celebrate the light of the world that we've just been celebrating all December. That's my challenge to you this year.
forget all of the great things you did when did I throw away faith for the impossible how did I start to believe you weren't sufficient for me why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles You are more than able You are more than able You are You are more
Well, we've had such a great time together. I, I hate for it to end, but I have great news. We're back in person and online next Sunday. It's gonna be a great time together. I hope to see you there. Uh, we're gonna be kicking off a new series called Be a Light. And it's all about how you and I carry the light of Jesus with us and we reflect that light out to all the world. It's gonna be a great time. I hope that you're planning on being there and inviting others to join you there. Now, between now and then, uh, we also have a fun time coming up on January 3rd, this coming Wednesday. We're gonna have Undeck the Halls. We've got Christmas all over this place, but it's time to pack it up after the new year. And we can use all the help we can get. Uh, here's, we'll feed you if, if you'll come be part of it, but make sure you come for Undeck the Halls at five o'clock January 3rd, this coming Wednesday. Hey, listen, um, I know that uh, this has been a great time to come together. And maybe one thing you normally do when you come up to the church is that you, you give. That's the time you put something in an offering plate or you remember to do it that week. If you haven't given already this week, let me invite you to give. Here's how you can do that real simply. You can go to churchonthedrive.org slash give and you can select where you want it to go to in that little form. Um, and it's real simple. Or you can bring by a check or, or send a check through the mail up to Church on the Drive, 1914 Edgewater Drive, Orlando, Florida, 32804. I'd love for you to give. It's an act of worship, and every dime you give goes to ministry purposes, every single dime. So I hope that you'll do that. Hey, listen, I'm looking forward to seeing you this coming Wednesday for Undeck the Halls, and then for Sunday as we start our new series. Have a great week, and Happy New Year.